All righty, 11.04 on a beauty of a Saturday morning. Dr. Payne show uh, is happening. 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. Call us with your concerns, your pain concerns, your health concerns. And you, my friend, are right in the middle of expanding. You're doing great things with Pinpoint Health. So uh, tell me a little bit about it before we get rolling. Yes. Got to turn, on on. Your, oh, turn on your mic there, son. Jody usually does that for me. Oh, does that for me. Well, I, you know, for the longest time, I didn't even know what that was there, the on and off. Good. I was like, what, this thing just goes on and off. Well, I'm glad you're and in then, healthcare. And like Pavlov's dog, I was able to to watch it one day, and I was like, hang on, it's like that red light happens. When that goes when on, that's I on. start talking. Right, got you. And then I started <laughs> salivating, and it is what it is. I'm, I'm just glad you're in healthcare, not radio. Okay. <laughs> So what's going on, Bill? Uh, not too much. Yeah, so Pinpoint Health, uh, yeah. the expansion is on, that's for sure. Um, again, we started this show with the intention of prov- providing good quality um, education and health care um, for the people listening. And, um, you know, one of the biggest things about getting the appropriate care is convenience. Um, and convenience right. means being somewhere near you. Uh, now, at, you know, from the moment that I started this show, I knew that that was the case. And so we have... And we still have to this day a provider network because we don't have locations everywhere. Uh, But we're definitely in the midst of expanding uh, city to city. So right now we are uh, our two locations in Etobicoke, Toronto, um, Brampton, Newmarket, Richmond Hill. So so people have that convenience. So um, now anytime I refer someone to one of my providers, the provider network, I trust these people. Yeah. So it's not like I don't trust them. It's just I don't control everything about it. I don't control uh, what payments are, pricing. It's uh, not your shop. No, it, the cleanliness, all these things. Yeah. I just know these people. I know they're good people. Yeah. Uh, but it is definitely at a point where we want to start standardizing things. Um, and so many more to come. Uh, the the whole point of what I'm doing with Pim- Pinpoint Health, and we'll, we'll be rebranding the radio show too, uh, likely in May. Uh, is is to really build this brand and and, and and a place that people can feel safe. That's the Love big it. thing. We want we want people to be able to see the name and already feel like they're going there. Because one of the biggest things about healthcare is that it's usually based on referrals. Like if I if I said John, who, like where should I go for a dentist? It's usually like oh go see this person that I know, yep. and and that's usually the way it works. And it's that warm lead and. Yes. Uh, and I think me being on the radio, I'm that warm lead for so many people. People have heard me week after week, um, and they start to feel like they know me, which in a way they do. They know my thought processes. And the, when people come in um, after I've seen them, they always sit there and say, like, I knew you would say this. Like, you say it on the radio all the time. Right. I knew you would say this. You sound like you know what you're talking about. Um Another thing that I've had a ton of is people bringing in the people they care about to hear what I have to say. And they know what I'm going to tell them. Uh, I had a gentleman this week who um, came in and was very irritated at healthcare overall Mm -hmm. um, and was like pissed at previous experiences that he had had and all these things. And right, right off the bat, angry, like, yeah. And was being brought in by a loved one. And and the loved one is the person that listens to this show. And right away I was able to be like, Hey, calm down. And you know, the thing is, is it's all about education. One of the things that he was really pissed off about was, and and there was a lot, but one specific example was that he was at a hospital um, and he had had this shoulder issue. Um, They took an x-ray and then they told him like, you can go home. And he was so pissed off about that. Like they didn't do anything for me. They didn't treat me. And I sat there and I said, okay, but you need to understand the point of an emergency room. They took an x-ray to make sure there's no serious like infection or bone lesion, something that potentially could kill you. But if you have a soft tissue sprain, strain, or something like that, it's not life-threatening. All they're doing is telling you, hey, the the point of an emergency room is, is this going to kill you in the next 72 hours? That's yeah, all or, in the name. Yeah, exactly. It's, is, <laughs> is it an emergency? But it's incredible yeah. how many people... But as soon as I educated him on, yeah. him on that, like by the end of the appointment, he was giving me props. Like He just had... All his bear, all his nice. guard was down. He got what I was saying, and I was, and I even told him when you go places like he was he was saying that he was really getting aggravated with nurses and at the hospital and things like that. It's not the right approach. Like these people are working long hours. Working in a hospital environment is not easy. Like especially as a nurse, as a nurse, oh. the doctors, everybody, they're working long hours. You're seeing tons of people. The system is broken, so they're in that broken system, which means they're a byproduct of seeing too many you people bet. and all these things. And I can guarantee you. Nobody is in there with this thing in their head like we want to hurt people. Everyone is there to help people. 
but they just want you to be nice to them too. No, but like if I started getting angry at you, you wouldn't, you, you become defensive. Right. Nice is the way to go when you're dealing with people, not just in healthcare and everything. And, and you'll get that reciprocated. Um, and so that's a big thing that I've seen is a lot of people bringing in their loved ones, uh, to 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 hear to, so that I can tell them what I'm all, what I'm saying. A lot of the times when it's more about the mental aspect of what's going on. Sometimes people just need to hear it and need to hear it from an authority to say like, no, you, you now have, it's validated. Yeah, you have yeah. a cognitive problem here. You don't have a physical problem, and that's not bad. That's not like people think that if you have a cognitive problem, that that's like a bad thing compared to a physical problem. No. Our minds can be can have injuries and things too, and we need to work on that. It's the same. If if you're okay with your muscle being torn and having an injury that needs repair, why can't your brain sometimes have issues that need repair? That's just yep. it's called being human. We'll take a short break, Susan. I see you there on the line. Stand there, stay there, wait. We'll get to you and you as well. Just getting rolling. Plenty of time. Open lines are for you. 416-870-6400. Star 640 on your cell. Dr. Payne Show just getting revved up on a Saturday morning right here on Global News Radio. Plenty of time for you to call in. Indeed, it is 1115 and the Dr. Payne Show. Going to get uh, right to it. Hello, Susan. Thank you for hanging on. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm great. Thanks. Yourself? Sure, we're great. Uh, What's your concern? So I suffer from chronic pain, and uh, even though I had lost quite a bit of weight, it didn't help. I was depressed. I started putting on the weight. Mm -hmm. The more I put on, the more pain I'm experiencing. I've tried everything. Mm -hmm. So now there's this doctor who says that if you remove lectins from your diet, that uh, most, if not all, the chronic pain can go away. And I was just wondering if you heard about this and this gentleman and if you sort of go along with it. Okay, so no, I have not heard of that. Um, The one thing that I can tell you is this. I am never, well, I shouldn't say never. How do I phrase this very, very nicely and appropriately? If your own, things like this are are so multifaceted, there's so many reasons that someone develops chronic pain that just removing one thing or doing one intervention is never the answer. And I'm always hesitant of someone who's just selling one intervention. And, and John knows what I say about this. Yeah. Like if if every if you have a hammer, everything becomes a nail. Yeah. Um, now, for some people, it might work, and I think it it works not necessarily just because of of that. And I'm sure that there's probably I'd have to look further into it, but there's probably some benefit to things like that for sure. Is it the 100% benefit? No. But if you believe it is, that placebo effect might very well uh, assist assist in that. Yeah. And, and maybe, and that's why a lot of people will, will say like, oh, I did this one thing and, it's, and it worked. And a lot of times that's just simply because of placebo. Um, and that doesn't just go for these things like this. It can go for things like scope surgeries of the knee. There's a, a, a very good research study that was done on people having arthroscopic surgery of their knees. Two groups of people, both groups were blinded. They didn't know what they were having. One group actually got the operation. The other, uh, the other group just got incisions that the looked like, they of. Had, like that they had yeah. had. Outcomes at three, six, and 12 months, exactly the same. No kidding. Exactly the same outcomes. And so the, no statistical difference. So placebo plays a big part in every type of intervention, even people who are taking a Tylenol and believe that that will make their head, headache go away. Now, there's good research to suggest evidence for Tylenol. But again, the placebo component is important in everything. So, um, you know, to answer your question specifically, no, I have not heard of this. Uh, do I think that any one thing can cure something like chronic pain? No would be my my initial gut reaction on that um because if may it did ask, then then it would be everywhere may i ask what you recommend i've tried everything i've gotten so depressed from it yep. i mean i've tried everything that i know that i've been into so so you're saying something very important because a lot of chronic pain goes along with depression have you been treating your depression well i won't take antidepressants no no i'm not that. that's fine but have you done have you been working with someone on cognitive behavior therapy and changing your your thinking and your behavior around everything that's going on well i am right now in a uh, through my healthcare provider in a uh, chronic pain program mm-hmm. um trying different methods okay including they are including the cognitive we just did that uh, on uh, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. But so, and, and this is an important thing that I want you to understand when someone talks about doing it. Cognitive behavior therapy is not something you do on Thursday. It's something you have to do every minute of every day. Like right now, you have to be changing that belief system. 
right? That you have to be, it's, 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 it takes so long to achieve, but the only way you can achieve it is through doing it all the time. And the whole point of cognitive behavior therapy is how do you change your perception around what's going on for you? And just your phone call, just the way you're talking to me would suggest that you're not changing it and it doesn't happen quickly, but that's just one component. Then there's the physical component of it. There's the medication component of it. There's the healthy eating component. There's the exercise component. It's caused by so many things, which means it needs to be treated in so many different ways. Um, And if you're not doing all of those things all at the same time, 100% of the time, then you're not really treating it and and you're not treating it appropriately. That's how much it takes to get chronic pain out. Thank you. Thanks a lot for some help. Yep. Thanks, Susan. Appreciate that. You want to uh, want to follow up uh, info at paincarecanada.com, right? Yeah, for sure. It's uh it's an important thing that people realize that with a lot of these things, especially the chronic issues, there's it's not just a one thing fix. And I and I see this so often. I, I, I mean as owning and operating clinics, I get people calling me with their machines, their tools that they're saying is the be all end all and that's you know, that's a scary proposition like just take lectins out of your diet and you're cured yeah that's could it help is there is there some evidence to suggest it could help maybe i sure. haven't looked but if into it doesn't it. help yeah what's the what's the but, outcome but there's good research to suggest that removing say things like grains and and these types of things yes mm-hmm. does help manage your pain because it manages inflammation does that mean if you do that you will get rid of all of your chronic pain no. not unless all of your chronic pain is due to that which i highly doubt yeah um because again, with the chronic component, there's the mental aspect of it that is so, so often not spoken about. It's always we're always dealing with the physical problem, the physical problem, or the um, the biochemical problem. There must be something inside of me, some chemical screwing things up. Yeah, but there's also the way you think that that can screw a lot of things up. Um, and again, you need to you need to do the right things in terms of that. And that's not easy. I don't say. Oh that no, to, it's difficult. Yeah, it's I don't. Very difficult. I don't say that to be dismissive. Yeah. Um, I say it because that's what it takes. You need to be that aggressive with it. You need to be doing it all the time. And the other thing is this isn't like one of those things where with chronic pain, I'm going to do this treatment protocol for two months and I'm done. No, no, this is your life now. You have to treat its lifestyle modification around that. It's the same thing as if someone had diabetes. It's not just going to go away. But if you can modify your lifestyle to do the right things around diabetes, you will manage that diabetes very well and it will likely never really bother you. But if you do the wrong things because you believe the answer is just in a pill or in one thing, then that those are usually the people that just progressively get worse. Short break, more phone calls. That's how we uh, that's how we do it here. 416-870-6400, star 640 on your cell. Dr. Payne Show continues Global News Radio. It is 11.22 here, and uh, Dr. Payne Show, 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. You want to reach out, info at paincarecanada.com or 1-855-55-DR-LOU, D-R-L-O-U, and get that uh, get that consultation happening if you have any other questions. You know, Susan's call was so good because she began it with uh, what we've heard so many times on the air is, I've tried everything. Once you say that, now you're yeah. a defeatist attitude, right? Yes. Now the mental takes over. I've tried and, everything. Yeah, and, and that and that's again goes back to that perception, right? Like if you if you're saying things like I've tried everything, there's there's some type of um you're sort of saying like there's nothing left. Yeah. Right. And you're starting to believe that. Um the other thing is people will often think they've tried everything. The other problem is, you know, how in what in what order did you try it? Okay. Did you try it all at the same time? A lot of the times just the fact that you're saying tried would suggest that there's a failure. It's like people that are like, oh, I've tried dieting. And it's yeah. like, well, just the fact you have to say that yeah. likely means you haven't you lost any it. weight. Yeah. 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 Buffet. Or I've tried. The, my favorite yeah. is, is like, you know, when I ask people, do you smoke? And it's like, well, I've quit a few times. It's like, well, no, then you've never quit because <laughs> you're like, still doing it. Yeah. You, you yeah. would essentially not be smoking. You would say the answer is either yes or, or no. no. Yeah. Um, and so you've never really quit. So it's a funny thing that I always laugh at, yeah. um, which is a very, you know, one prognostic thing in terms of uh, for anything, pain management, uh, injuries, even other healthcare concerns, people who are still smoking, smoking cigarettes, it is like one of the worst prognostic factors you have. Uh, it does nothing to help you for anything. Uh, and yeah, there's it, no benefit to it. There is zero benefit to it. There is, and in fact, there's a lot of harm to it. And that's for like yeah. anything. It even delays something as simple as when we see somebody who, like, let's say they they just rolled their ankle playing basketball. 
right? But they're a smoker. You've decreased your prognosis. Your your prognosis How crazy on that. Is that? It's it's very crazy. It, it delays the healing of your body all kinds. Um, and a lot of chronic issues, um, you know, obviously, as we've moved on through time, less and less people are smoking. We hope. We hope, yes. But there are a lot of people um, who have chronic pain today that's developed over a number of years and were smokers. Um, it does nothing to help you. So, you know, that's one thing that when I see people, I just tell them, like, get that out. Like, if 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 you're thinking, like, what's one thing can I, I can do to be healthier – uh, and you're a smoker. You you don't need to think for anything except just stop smoking. Get off the butts. Yeah, you're yeah. you're decreasing everything, like in terms of oxygen supply to your body. All of these things. I actually had a person this week um, who is, uh, smoked for you know, or is still smoking for like fifty fifty years, and uh, they had left sided like flank pain and things like that. And you know, those symptoms start to get scary when you when you consider that you're a smoker and you start having. Pain in that area, it's always something we always investigate the lung um, to make sure there's nothing more serious going on. But, it, you know, if I it, that's usually my one thing to people. If you're not if you're not doing anything about smoking, you need to stop. And the other thing is uh, another thing that I see a lot of is in terms of uh, diet and stuff. When people are uh, a lot of like soft drinks and sodas and things like mm-hmm. that, like just move to water. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For for pain management. And then the other thing from the cardiovascular side is just. You should be like you should be doing like a twenty or twenty five minute walk every day at a decent intensity baseline bare minimum yeah bare baseline. minimum and if you're not doing that and you're living in chronic pain and more so like a lot of the times it's that compounded effect where it's like well I smoke I don't move and I eat poorly it's like well it's a great trifecta you got going on there yeah, yeah. You, you you need to change those things yeah. Um, and that's why a lot of the times there's a frustration inside of me when someone's always looking for what someone else or a pill or something could do for them. And it's like, but the answer is with you. Like you can, if you did those three things or four things or five things, you would feel much better. Um, and so, you know, you shouldn't always rely on something or someone else to make you feel better. A lot of the that reliance needs to fall back on you. And that could be for even other things like the rehabilitation aspect of injury that we speak about all the time in terms of um, doing the right things after your care to keep the strength up, make sure things are conditioned properly so that you uh, minimize the reoccurrence of injuries and minimize their exacerbations. I think it's funny when you mention keeping things up because it was – my, my my own mother in law the other day she knows I've been doing a ketogenic diet for I don't know a year and a half and she came up and she goes so when uh, when are you going to stop that I go it's not a, I said it's funny that you you asked me that but your husband has been smoking for fifty years yeah. you, never, you never ask him when he's going to stop that course <laughs> I said it's not it's not a course it's, yeah. it's a change of lifestyle life when am I going to stop when yeah. I'm in a box six <laughs> yeah. feet down that's when I'm going to stop pretty much but it's funny the mindset when it comes to smoking and stuff like that yeah. You know, no, no. what do you think, though, as far as, you know, there's fewer people smoking, as you said, we hope. I don't know what the statistics hope, yeah. really are. But what do you think about um, as far as if you've seen results in your clinics, uh, especially the younger set now, vaping? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not cigarettes, but it's vaping, so yeah. I'm not smoking. That and now legalized marijuana. You're still, it's not tar, yeah. it's not nicotine, but you're you're still smoking, you're still sucking smoke well, in your lungs. So when you're actually smoking a joint, there's yeah. actually, per joint compared to cigarette, yeah. um, it's actually three times the amount of tar in that joint. Come on! So the tar component is actually more. Uh, so I am not a big fan of smoking, right? Like, I think if you are going to use it, there's better ways. Uh, obviously, for me as a healthcare professional, it's around the medicinal aspect of it. Mm-hmm. A lot of the medicinal stuff is in a pill form and oil form. I think that is definitely a much better um, approach. But definitely, if, if like, although it might be not as bad as cigarettes, if you're still smoking, you're still smoking. Yeah, lungs right? are made for air. Yeah, lungs are made for air. It doesn't matter that you think you're not like and I'll, and granted, I would say that overall it is likely healthier overall than a cigarette. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the tar, there's definitely if not equal if not more tar uh in in a joint compared to a cigarette. Now people will say, "Yeah, but I I only smoke one joint a day. I don't there's people that are smoking, you know, pack of cigarettes a day." Right. Um fine. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying I'm not a big fan of smoking. Like I think like any type of smoke inhaled into the lungs is not a good idea for the health of the lung. Um, and there's better ways, to, especially now that you can get it in so many other formats. Yeah. Like why, why not? Yeah. It's sort of my, my take on that. Except the edibles. Those can get out of control. 
Damn, these brownies maybe, are good. Maybe. All of a sudden, you're 300 pounds going, I should have smoked it instead. This is brutal. But no, we're not oh condoning any of that behavior on this show. Uh, 416-870-6400, star 640 on sale. The Dr. Payne Show continues on Global News Radio. 416-870-6400, star 640 on the cell is the way to call in, ask your questions, get some, get some answers. Ruth, thank you for hanging on. Good morning. Good morning. Um, hi, is this the doctor I'm talking to? I am here, yes. Oh, great. No, um, I have a question, and I often listen to your show on Saturday mornings. Okay. And because I do have arthritis and a few problems myself. Sure. But right now I am calling and wondering if you could have any suggestions. I have a husband who came down with shingles back in October. Okay. And he got, he's, you know, finished with all the rash and the, um, uh, I guess, the blisters that you get. Mm. But since then, he's been left with this nerve pain. And uh, so we're now about five months now. And from yeah. what everything that I read about it, it seems they don't really know what to do about it, that it could last right. for months or it could last for a year. And I was just wondering, in listening to you, if you had any other suggestions sure. for let, anybody that's had this. Let me start by saying before we get into that, I like how you said I have a husband, like yeah. like as if you potentially have other ones yeah. that don't have shingles, no, 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 which I thought no, was no, very no, funny. No, 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 <laughs> One is enough. One is yeah, enough. no kidding, right? You bet. <laughs> exactly. um, yes. But thank by you. The way, excuse me. No, it's way, okay. My husband is 89 years old. So oh, okay. He's not young. Good yeah, man. Not, yeah. Um, well, good for him for getting to 89, though. That's wonderful, important. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Yes. He yeah. does take care of himself. Good. Usually. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, shingles is it's a tough one. Um, Post herpatic neuralgia, which is uh, the term for pain after shingles, um, is very that, is yeah. very common. Yeah. Um, is there a way to treat it? Yes, there are ways to treat it, especially if you've done nothing at all. Um, where is it? Is it in the body or the face? Where would the... It's in the body. He in the body. like around the waist, yeah. okay, so from the navel around to the back. Yeah. yeah, so because we can target the spine, that becomes a little bit easier. When it's in the face, uh, the source of the problem is within the brainstem, so it's very hard to get there. So right. within the body, uh, it, it is easier to target. Uh, but again, we'd have to do an assessment on, on sort of where the pain is, exactly um, and the different things but there's a lot of different approaches all the way from medication to things like acupuncture therapy that have that I've seen has helped with that to injections um, to exercises and things like that that could help manage the pain sometimes it's self-limiting and goes away on its own like you've read sometimes it could go away in a month right, two months yeah. a year two years it depends sometimes it never goes away it's it's a very it's a very tricky thing because it's based on the virus right, um, yes, but yeah, it's yeah. definitely if he's done nothing it is worth getting a, an assessment by me and seeing what what could be done uh, okay well uh, where is your clinic in Toronto uh, it's uh, Etobicoke General Hospital, so that'd be Highway 27 and uh, Finch. Finch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, would be the major intersection. It's good that you know more than me, John. Sorry, where, I didn't Finch in where? Uh, highway 27, north of Etobicoke. Uh, yeah. No, I'm I, I'm in where is Scarborough? Scarborough, yeah, the other way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it would be a one-time drive for, for getting the advice, right? I'm not suggesting to do the treatment there, and then yeah. we could send you back somewhere closer to home. Um, okay, so I'll speak to him about sure. that and see if he'd like to go. Okay. And, and um, have you got a phone number for that place? Is there a different phone number? Yeah, Ruth, it's, uh, if you have a pen handy, it's yes, one eight. Yep, yeah, it's one eight five five eight five 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 five. Doctor Lou D R L O U. And Doctor Lou L. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Doctor <laughs> Lou. Yeah, okay. Okay, thanks, okay, Ruth. listen, thank you so much for the information. No problem. Thank okay. you, Ruth. Appreciate okay, thank it. Thank you. Take care. Bye. You bet. Enjoy the rest of uh, your weekend. Uh, Monique, hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? So um, I was at my chronic pain clinic, and I was informed that the nerve block shots that I received may not be offered anymore by the Ford government, that they are trying to push something through behind closed doors without letting people know that they want to claw back the nerve block shots to four per visit at a maximum of 16 per year. Mm -hmm. And my pain clinic plans to close if this happens. Okay. And so I, so I what's your question to, for me, Monique? So, A, um, is there an alternative to nerve block shots? And B, uh, have you heard the same thing? Um, I've heard some stuff that some things might happen. Uh, you know, I, this I'm not. Uh, this is not a political show, so I, you know, those th concerns I always say are best directed towards your uh, member or the MPP. Um, if if it's of concern, 
the one thing that I know they're trying to do. And and the thing is, this is where people don't realize this always happens in healthcare. And every time there's a new government, Mm -hmm. they sit there and they try to see the big thing is evidence based approach. We want to be able to fund the things that are based in evidence. Um, you know, and I've heard rumblings about this and some other things, but they're looking at things where the evidence is not great for it, where, you know, is is getting nerve blocks the best option? Um, and some of the research might suggest that it's not. And so they they might want to limit that number of things. This is the issue when when you're dealing with a public system and there's public money involved there. Sometimes you need to find deficiencies um, and it, those deficiencies might mean. Uh, something, you know, not so good for certain people, uh, but for other people, it, it saves money in the long run. So I, I don't necessarily have an opinion on it yet because I don't know. I just know that governments often will do this and look at these things and say, what is the evidence suggest? And we will pay based on the evidence uh, because we're using taxpayer dollars for that. And what do you do? You have an opinion on nerve block shots and what an alternative will be? Well, I think there's a lot of other things that can be done. Again, I mean, here's the way I sort of see it. If someone has to be getting that many nerve shots all the time, then the question becomes, are they are they actually really working? Um, and so I think anything that's being done repeatedly over and over and over again is likely not working to the effect that the person uh, or the professional intends anymore. And it's just sort of something there to do it um, for that reason. So are there alternatives to nerve blocks? There's an alternative to pain management, um, which again, the best evidence that I've seen is the the multifaceted approach, which might include some of that, the rehabilitation, the cognitive behavior therapy, um, the diet modification, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of things uh, that need to be done when you're dealing with chronic issues. And I absolutely do all of those things. Mm-hmm. But the, uh, the, what the nerve block shots are allowing me, along with the medication, is to have some quality of life. You know, right. I, can, I can function mm-hmm. normally without being drugged. And um, I'm, that over and over and over again is a maintenance type thing. Yeah, you, you yeah I, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just telling you that, I, you know, I don't control the decisions that are made at, uh, at Queen's Park. All I'm saying is that a lot of these things, you might be a great example of the system and, and you're using it the right way and it's being done to you the right way. But what I can tell you is that we can't look at individual cases. We have to look at it as a whole. And as a whole, there's not a lot of great research around just injecting people um, for their, their aches and their pains. Hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I still don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, that's that's a conversation. Again, that, this hasn't happened, right? So right. Uh, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. So I'm just sort of giving you my my opinion on it. All right. Thank okay. you very much. No problem. Pre- Thanks, Minnie. Appreciate that. I uh, didn't mean to hang up on you there. If you want to follow up, one 855 doctor Lou D-R-L-O-U, info at paincarecanada.com. I see you there, Francis. Hang on. We'll get to you and your calls as well. 416 870 6400 star 640 on sale. Dr. Payne Show, Global News Radio. It is 1141. Yeah, 416 870 6400 star 640 on your cell to call in. I, uh, a little under 20 minutes. Lots of time for you to ask your questions. Francis, thank you for uh, for hanging on. Good morning. Um, I, I, I notice, and of course, it makes a lot of sense, as he says, that uh, you have to be an advocate of a multifaceted approach to, mm-hmm. to any kind of chronic pain scenario by way of you know, eating right and exercise and getting extra sleep, etc. The one area that I'm, I'm sort of curious what uh, the doctor's opinion is, is with respect to alcohol use, and I don't mean obviously excessive alcohol yep. use, but, um, but there's so many different uh, reports that seem to have come out with respect to, uh, you know, um, having one drink is okay. Sometimes it is actually, you know, and especially with, with respect to cardio, I guess, heart health and overall in that context yep. and lowering cholesterol, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So in general terms, I won't go on. What is your so, yeah, so, opinion so, of alcohol with respect to that? No problem. Uh, and it's a great question. So there's something called the deflaming guidelines uh, that was released, I believe, by the government of Ontario around things that help manage inflammation in the body. Now, here's the important thing to remember about alcohol. Like we can talk about it might be good for one thing, but then it's bad for another mm-hmm. thing. And a great example of that is red wine. Oh, so every week it's so, good, it's bad. It's yeah, good. It's so bad. the deflaming yeah. guidelines yeah. suggest that actually one glass of red wine a day actually helps to fight inflammation, right? Okay. But now if you are someone that has gout, 
red wine can like set off your gout, right? So, oh. so it's very much, it needs to be individualized. But as a general rule, um, when you're looking at, at uh, red wine and stout beer, uh, okay. things like Guinness, oh. seem to be good from an inflammatory standpoint. Right. Um, and then other things, and the reason why the other things tend not to be is because they're often wheat or grain-based. And wheat and grain tends to cause inflammation in the body. Um, okay. So that's sort of like... It's, I'm not really giving you my opinion. I'm just giving you like what the deflaming guidelines say for inflammation in the body. Red wine and stout beer seems to be okay. But then again, taking that example that I just that I just gave you, like what if you have hepatitis as well? Then you probably shouldn't be having a stout beer every day. So right. there's these and important think- things to take into consideration um, when you when you're doing these things. Uh, and and it's also really like one other thing here too that's really important. I remember I saw. Um, A daughter brought in her dad, and her dad was, uh, sorry, her mother, and her mother was uh, 94, 95 years old, like something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was like, it was a hip problem, and they were talking about this and that, but then uh, this mother likes to have like a little bit of wine each day. Or, and 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 I think even a little bit of bourbon after that. I love her. Right? She's great. And and, yeah. and 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 the daughter was like, like I've been telling her that she should stop that. And it's like, well, one of the other things around being healthy is just being happy. Like yeah. if right. this lady's exactly. made it to ninety four yes, and she yeah. could do that with exactly. with She's wine and a bourbon, like I'd go probably start, baby. yeah, go for it. You know, <laughs> right. like it, I actually think it'd probably be worse to take it away from her yep. because now it's like, yes. oh great, I can't even do this anymore. Like I've, I've yeah, I'm losing right. my independence in every sense so that's something important to take into consideration too like if you're like like let's say you john like you're Mm -hmm. on your keto like and you do your keto but you're someone that like says i i need though to have a cookie once in a while like i love chocolate chip cookies it's my thing how about her have a have once in a while have it like if it's going to make you happy it's not the end of the world like if you're having 15 cookies every day we got a problem. But if every once in a while you're saying, yeah, you know what, I, I wouldn't mind that, then then I don't. I think those are all important things. So if you're someone that uses my belief, and this is not my medical opinion, it's my life opinion, yes. is everything is good in moderation. That's my life's, my, my life's opinion, is that if you do things and you do it to the, the point where it makes you happy, like I've seen people who smoke their whole lives and never get lung cancer. Right. But if you talk to them, they don't care that they smoke. Versus I meet people who are smoking cigarettes saying like, Oh, I got to quit this. This is going to kill me one day. I guarantee you that that is worse than smoking is bad. I'm not condoning smoking. Right. But if it's the, also the belief in what you do. If it makes you happy, I think it's good for you. Excellent advice. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Francis. Appreciate that. Red wine, Guinness, and chocolate chip cookies. I am in zen right now. This, that's this, that's this, your thing? This couldn't be a happier place. <laughs> Too bad I don't do any of it. Uh, Ian, good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, sir. What's uh, What's happening with you? Um, so I have a, a very painful left hip that's been bothering me for a couple of years, and the doctors seem to be challenged to come up with a long-term solution. Um, so I've had extra x-rays, ultrasounds, MRIs, and there's arthritis in there, and there's um, other issues, and I've tried um, chiropractors, osteopaths. I'm currently having a course of injections at a pain clinic, and nothing seems to be working. Okay. I do have a small hernia in there as well. Yeah. Okay. And so what, what is the diagnosis? Is it arthritis or what have they told you? So, yes, there's arthritis in there, but that, they say that's, it's not severe enough okay. to be causing this type of pain. Okay. The, the hernia causes pain when I, I'm in a very active job. I do a lot of heavy lifting, so the hernia hurts when I do that. But that's not causing the long, this constant pain too, which is there all the time, which keeps me awake at night. Um, so if they think it's something very deep in there, something a muscular or, or tendon that, that's, that's. And you're saying that this issue. is aggravated with your work as well? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, and this is a big thing that I see all the time, right? So forgetting what the diagnosis potentially is, but if we know the aggravating factor and you continue the aggravating factor, now this is not me suggesting don't work. I just want to make you understand in terms of like, how can, like, if you have a torn bicep, for example, and so flexion of the elbow is what's bad, but you continue flexing the elbow because you have to, whether it's work, life, whatever it may be, how can it ever really heal? Um, and so that that's an important thing to consider. And that's why that's, you know, and you said a good example. This is why there's this discussion around uh, like uh, the other uh, Monique brought up around um, injections maybe being limited and things because 
in your case, you're saying you've done them, they're not helping, but a lot of the times it's not that they don't help. It's like the people go back to doing the things that are hurting them. And if you don't somehow remove or modify, um, then you can't really help, hope for much more than just temporary relief followed by re-aggravation. Um, and so that's an important thing that I think is missing in your management is, is how do you potentially modify some of the things that you're doing uh, in order to allow some healing to occur for more than just, you know, 24 hours. Right. So I've tried, I mean, I've take, I, I mean I'm self-employed, so I've got no benefits, anything like that, but I've taken weeks off work just to lie there and do nothing. Well, that's, and, that can be equally as bad. So doing nothing. There needs well, to be I, somewhere I in between. Do nothing. I don't do any lifting. I still walk every day. Yep. Okay. I walk 25 minutes every day. I'm, I'm still very active that yep. way, but I don't do any heavy lifting. Right. And the pain still hasn't gone away. Okay. I, I mean, I'd need to assess it in all honesty. I'd need to see what's going on um, in order to, to give you a better idea because it's, right. it's a little preplexing based on what you're saying. But, uh, it, you know, hip, hips are, are, for me, not, I don't want to say they're not complicated, but I'm, I'm pretty good at figuring out uh, hip issues. And so uh, come, come see me for an assessment and, and we'll go from there. Ian, appreciate that call. It is one eight five 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 Doctor Lou D R L O U info at paincarecanada.com. Reach out, do it, get it happening for you as well. Still uh, some time here to call in. Lots of time actually. Four one six eight seven zero sixty four hundred star six forty on your cell. This is the Doctor Pain Show. It's on Global News Radio eleven fifty two. Last few minutes of the show. You still have a bit of time. Four one six eight seven zero sixty four hundred star six forty on your cell. Yeah, it seems like a theme's been happening today. It's like people just say, "I tried this, I've tried that, nothing's working." Doctor Lou, help me out. It's working. I'm thinking about a lot of the calls related to the political stuff because, for like, aside from from what I do, I I, I do. I think it's important that people realize that we are in a system that is publicly funded and there is a lot of unfairness and waste in the system. And, and sometimes people don't, I think the average person maybe doesn't realize how much money they spend on taxes. Um, and when oh. you can, it, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy what we spend on taxes. And when you consider like you and I were talking about like, you know, the person who does nothing wrong to, or no, nothing right, doesn't take care of themselves and has one operation, one visit, all these things, one after another, after another, after another, um, is, is being that healthcare is being paid for. And then someone like you, who's in the gym five days a week, John, you're paying the equal amount of tax. Right. And yeah. so, um, there needs to be a way, and and I and I actually agree with finding a better way to run this healthcare system, a way that that you know not not necessarily would say, well, that person doesn't deserve healthcare because yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Su- no, yeah. no, no, I'm not suggesting that. That's not right. What I am suggesting is that there needs to be a focus on what are the evidence based things that the healthcare system is doing, um, and and we we pay for that, and maybe we even put a cap on some things, right? Like we were talking about, like there's a ton of people out there that abuse emergency rooms and walk-in clinics and they know they're abusing it. Like, you know, they have a small sniffle and boom, they're at the emergency room. Or a sore room. elbow. Why yeah, are you in the yeah, emergency And they're in an emergency right. room when they, when there's a million better options uh, than that. And, and they're, and that's not like they're doing it one time. It's like, they're doing it all the time. And I, and I've seen this and I've talked to my colleagues that work in hospitals um, and they know it's a broken system too. It's just it is what it is. And so I think they're. I think it's good that the government wants to find ways to uh, uh, to do that because I, I don't know. I don't know that it could last forever if we have to pay for all these deficiencies. I think a lot of it's immediacy with people, and uh, I think I, I don't know if it's a vast majority don't have those statistics, but a lot of people out there who work. They're not self-employed. They work for a company, you know, A, B, or C, and they have extended healthcare benefits. They don't want to wait till Monday to book a, you know, an appointment with you or with their physio or with their chiro. No, I'll just go to emerge when I got a sore shoulder. That's yeah. the problem. Well, that's hey, I got to fix it now. That, and that's what I'm talking about. Where there's a deficiency, like you have that that type of person who has healthcare benefits. It's like, but use that, right? You're pay- you and your employer are both paying for that, and in using that, it's still going to be free quote unquote to you, right? Because you don't have to pay out of pocket or you'll get reimbursed. And you're saving room and money in the in at the emergency room for someone who like if someone's having a stroke, they need an emergency room. Right. If your elbow is sore, you don't need an emergency yeah, room. You got a left arm tingle happening, get to an emergency yeah, room type of thing. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. You know, you got a constellation of symptoms that might suggest a stroke. Yeah, you want to make sure if obviously if there's ever anything that you think could be life threatening, that's what the emergency room is for. Uh 
But there's a lot of people that know that it's not an emergency and they're going there. Or people going back to the to the same walk-in clinic or the family doctor with the same thing like, oh, my elbow's sore. And they've been told, well, you need to go get therapy or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to do that. And they keep going back, my elbow's sore, my elbow's sore. Yeah, but you've already been told now a hundred times on what you should be doing and you yeah. keep coming back. And all that's doing is cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching on the taxpayers. Um, so I, I think it's important that a solution is found towards that. But that's my my little rant on the pol- political side of things. Um, besides that, if you are dealing with these things, then you need to get these things sorted with. And that's what me and my team are here for, uh, to help people uh, get on the right track towards recovery and management of their issues. Um, and the sooner you do those things, the sooner, the more likely you are to actually you know, quote unquote, heal. Because the longer you wait, the tougher it can it's be, right? Bad when you're waiting. If you if you're listening, and I've had a lot of people that say, "Oh, I've listened to you for years, um, and I had this issue, and I never came in, but now it's at a point where I need to come in." That's good. I'm happy you came in. But if you're listening and that resonates with you, come in sooner, uh, because the longer you wait, the more prognostically your your, your prognosis goes down, uh, and as that goes down. Yeah, it makes it less likely that you'll be able to have that quality of life in those things because it'll become a nuisance. Um, and so, and again, and we've got a bunch of locations to serve you better. And these locations have a, a bunch of different services available in them um, and not all consistent location to location. Uh, but definitely any of your healthcare needs, give me a call and I'm happy to try to um, to direct you in the right place. And it's, you know, it's funny, you talk about taking more time, that's the irony about the Emerge, too. You ever go in there at 9 o'clock at night and not get out of there till 6 a.m.? Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> that's, that's I don't want to sit there that long. That's brutal. I'd rather wait and go to my own doctor the next day. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It, but it, it again, it, it comes down to proper management right. because this is a system... You know, if everyone was just paying for their own stuff, then do whatever you want because right. it's it's your money. But when, when it's a pooled group of money based on taxes... You're just wasting a lot of it. Yeah. And like, and if we really understood the waste, no one would be happy. And I think people really sometimes need to sit down and realize how much they pay in taxes. I think a lot of people are ignorant towards, they, they think like the amount that they're getting it, at, every two weeks in their bank account or unchecked. Sometimes I think people don't realize, like, have you ever looked how much is taken off? Yeah. Um, and at the end of the year, how much you're paying extra? It's, it's a lot of money. You know, it's funny because I've talked to family in the States and there, there's been situations on their healthcare system where it's like, you know, you've got problems with your hand, but you've got to choose which finger you want to amputate it because you can't afford both. You want to be in that yeah. situation. No, and that, and that's what I mean. We need Definitely, I'm an advocate for the public system, right. but I think there needs to be like what things should the public system cover and Correct. what things should it not? Because, yeah, definitely things like that. Yeah, it's a, that's a scary thing. Like, you know, that's also... But, you know, one thing I will say about the American system, where it does work and people have the coverage, you know, if you need an MRI, you're getting it today with the with the report yeah. and the follow-up. Like, it's all being done. Yeah, it's like getting an oil change. Yeah. yeah. You're just going somewhere, it's getting done, and you, and you can go and get screenings. Like, if you're worried about your health, you get your whole body screened. That stuff doesn't exist here, except yeah. with me. <laughs> except with you. Take it from there. You want to reach out, one 55 doctor Lou D-R-L-O-U, info at paincarecanada.com. Till next weekend, that is it. The Dr. Payne Show on Global News Radio.